Okay, in this video we're going to talk about number 6 from the 2018 Calc BC exam. It's the series question and it has to do with natural log. So let's see what we can do. Um, we're given the series for natural log of 1 plus x. We're told it's x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3, blah blah blah. And we're also given the nth term, which is useful. Um, and the first thing that we're supposed to do is we are supposed to write the series for f of x equals x times natural log of 1 plus x over 3. Um, and this is good because we can just do it by uh, direct substitution and then by multiplication. So I'm going to write out a lot of steps, but um, that's basically what I'm going to be doing. So let's see. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to build the series. So I'm going to work on just natural log of 1 plus x over 3. I'm going to go to the uh, series I was given. I'm going to replace every x that I see with x over 3. So that's going to look like um, x over 3, and then it's going to be uh, minus 1 half. And then I'm going to replace that x with x over 3. So it's x over 3 quantity squared plus 1 third. Replace that x with x over 3. So we get this cubed and keep going. So this is how I always build these series. I find it easier to do it step by step. It's easier to trace back if you make a mistake. So we get this to finally our nth term. Um, is going to look like negative 1 to the n plus 1, replacing, uh, so over n, and then replacing x with x over 3 to get this. And then what I did next is I just kind of simplified this a little bit. I didn't expand any of the 3s to a power, but I, I rewrote it so it looks like this. So I have x squared, um, so it's x over 3 minus x squared over 2 times 3 squared plus x cubed over 3 times 3 cubed and so on. So my nth term ends up looking like negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the n over n times 3 to the n. Um, so that's just a little simplification to make it a little easier going forward. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by x. So x natural log of 1 plus x over 3 is going to be x times um, this entire thing that I just worked out because that's what natural log of 1 plus x over 3 is. And then uh, I went through and I distributed an x everywhere. So um, that what that does is it just increases the exponent of everything by 1. So you, instead of having x over 3, you have x squared over 3. Instead of x squared over 2 times 3 squared, you have x cubed, and so on. And it changes the nth term to negative 1 to the n plus 1, x to the n plus 1 over n times 3 to the n, and then plus dot, dot, dot. And then that's what f of x is. So just to kind of finish off this part, I rewrote it as f of x is equal to that. Um, so that's part A, so it's just direct substitution multiplied by x. That's a very common thing to be asked to do, so make sure you know how to do that. So I do want to take the nth term of the series that I got because the next part says to determine the interval of convergence for this thing. So I need to remember the nth term. Um, so the nth term looks like this. And what I'm going to do for interval of convergence, first I'm going to do the ratio test, then I'm going to test the endpoints. So uh, ratio test, so it's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of. So it's the n plus first term. So I'm replacing every n in the nth term with n plus 1. So it's going to be negative 1 to the uh, n plus 2. Uh, it's going to become x to the n plus 2 over the quantity n plus 1 and then times 3 to the n plus 1. So that's the n plus first term. And then it's divided by the nth term, but it's easier to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm just going to multiply by 1 over the nth term, which is this. Um, so it's the denominator moves up, the numerator moves down, we get this, absolute value. Um, the absolute value just takes care of the negative 1 to any power. Uh, we have x to the n plus 2 over x to the n plus 1. That's just going to be the absolute value of x because uh, n plus 2 minus n plus 1 is just 1. So that gives us the absolute value of x. You can bring out the n and the n plus 1 because you're going to infinity, so they're definitely positive. So we get the limit as n approaches infinity of, uh, we still have an n absolute value of x in the numerator. Uh, in the denominator, we still have n plus 1. And then since it's 3 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1, we actually have a 3 in the denominator as well. So we have n plus 1, and we have that 3 left over. OK, so this, if we take the limit, is just going to be the absolute value of x over 3 because the n over n plus 1, as you go to infinity, that limit is just 1. So we're just left with this. We know that this converges absolutely um, anytime uh, this thing that we just calculated is less than 1. So it definitely converges for the absolute value of x over 3 less than 1, which is equivalent to um, 
the absolute value of x is less than 3, which is also equivalent to negative 3 to 3. So that's the open interval, but we have to test the endpoints. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to let x equal negative 3, and the whole series, the summation, becomes the sum from 1 to infinity of, I'm just replacing the x with negative 3. So it's going to look like negative 1 to the n plus 1, that stays. The x becomes negative 3, so negative 3 to the quantity n plus 1 over n times 3 to the n. And then this we can rearrange. So we get the sum from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n is still there. I'm going to make negative 3 into negative 1 times 3. So it's really another negative 1 to the n plus 1, a 3 to the n plus 1. And then the denominator stays the same. And now we have uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 1 to the n plus 1. So you add the exponents. So I get negative 1 to the 2n plus 2. That's important because that's always even, which means it's really just 1. Um, we still have a 3 and we have an n because 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n is just 3. So this whole thing is actually just 3 over n, which means this thing definitely um, diverges because that's the harmonic series. It's 3 times the harmonic series, but it definitely diverges. So let's take a look at x equals 3 and see what happens. So x equals 3, I do the same thing where I substitute into the nth term. So I have the sum from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1, 3 to the n plus 1 over n times 3 to the n. Um, similar canceling, so there's nothing to cancel with the negative 1 to the n plus 1. So that's going to hang around. 3 to the n um, plus 1 over 3 to the n is just 3. So there's a 3 in the numerator, and then all that's left in the denominator is 3. Uh, this series is actually the alternating harmonic, so I know that this converges because it is three times the alternating harmonic, which is a convergent series. Um, so I can say that the interval of convergence includes positive three, doesn't include negative three. So the interval of convergence is going to be um, from negative three to three. So negative three less than x, less than or equal to three. Okay, so that's our interval of convergence using the ratio test. Um, and then the final question, is uh, we have this as our series, and we're told to use P4 is the, P sub four is the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for F about X equals zero, which means you go up to the fourth degree. So that means we're only gonna use three terms because at the third term, uh, if you cut it off, you get uh, X to the fourth. So that's fourth degree. And we wanna use alternating series error for, um, find a bound for uh, the difference between P4 of two and F of two. So. Uh, let's see, so P4 of 2, just to get our estimate that we're going to use, we don't actually need to show this, I don't think, because it doesn't say to find uh, the estimate, it just says to estimate the error. So this is uh, the approximation we get using P4, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to justify using it, because it's not clear if I have to do that, so I'm going to do it to avoid a problem. So at x equals 2, um, the series definitely alternates the terms decrease in magnitude and uh, they decrease towards zero. So they have a limit of zero, which means that this is a convergent alternating series. So I can use the alternating series error bound. Okay, so that means that the error, so the error is just the difference between your estimate and the actual value. So it's frequently written this way. So the absolute value of the error is less than two to the fifth over four times three to the fourth which is the magnitude of the first term that was left off, right? We use the first three terms. The next term would be uh, negative two to the fifth over four times three to the fourth, but you just want the magnitude of that. So that you can simplify. Uh, you don't need to though, you could have just left it and I recommend that you do. Um, and that just to clarify in case anyone's curious is the magnitude of the first term that we left off. Um, and that's it, that's the whole problem. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.